Executives from the world's leading technology companies and government officials, including U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and senior representatives from China and Russia, gathered today for the London Conference on Cyberspace Security. Well, I'm pleased to say that uh, Lord John Reid, former UK Home Secretary and Defence Secretary and principal with the security advisory company, Ch the Chertoff Group, is, is with us now. There have been uh, all sorts of sources telling us just quite how serious these cyber attack threats are getting. I noticed probably most recently GCHQ here in the UK um, saying that these attacks, in, even just in the UK, are getting to disturbing levels. The stat that I saw, which was amazing, 20,000 malicious emails sent to UK government inboxes every month, which was, which was extraordinary. How serious are these threats, though? It's easy to grab a headline, yeah. it looks really scary, but how, how, how much of a threat <laughs> is it to the the nuts and bolts of companies and governments? Well, they're a lot more serious than just abusive emails. I mean, I think governments get used to them by post or any other means. But I mean, we've now got uh, cyber crime, which is growing like mad. That's ID fraud and so on, on individuals and companies. We've got hacktivism, if you want to call it, with hackers, some who are doing it because of their conscientious reasons or to take on authority, others doing it for profit. You've then got industrial espionage on a massive cyber scale now, and that's for companies and chief executives, that's probably one of the biggest problems because that gives you an advantage, gives your competitor a, an advantage on transactions. Uh, we've seen investment banks being um, entered now for information which would give some competitors a, a huge advantage. Reputational damage um, if your data is stolen. And so, you know, I'm sorry, we've got enough bad news today uh, and this week, but, but this is a very serious problem. It's a serious problem, but <coughs> also solving it, it raises its own problems, doesn't it? I mean, I'm thinking along the lines of, on the one side, you've got uh, cyber crime, but you've also got the, the right to freedom of information and, and freedom Absolutely. of expression. Around the riots, we saw lots of people complaining about the use of social media, etc., um, for criminal ends, <coughs> but also people use the same means for, for democratic ends, to, to get the information and express themselves as they wish. You put it very well. The, the internet, electronic communications, brings huge opportunities to all of us and it brings that because of interchange finance trade information knowledge education on the social side the interchange is a huge step forward for the, you know, the whole of the human race really but the interdependence that it brings because we're now interdependent on everyone else and other people can enter our privacy brings huge vulnerabilities now this is the problem for leaders in industry you know CEOs because they're going to have to I think recognize appreciate and pay attention to the fact that protecting your reputation and your information your data is no longer a sort of optional add-on. This isn't a hit in the bottom line. This is absolutely central core business now. And if people don't take care of that in the commercial organizations, they're going to find that the, the, uh, the hackers, the entries that I mentioned earlier, will give huge advantage to others and be damaging in transactional, in commercial and in reputational uh, ways to any uh, company that ends up vulnerable to Agreed. it. Um, let's be honest about this. We're not talking about the danger from individual hackers or anarchic groups or people who want to bring down capitalism. We're talking about the major threat to those corporations and states that you mentioned coming from the people you actually need partnership with as well. We're talking about the countries such as China, such as Russia potentially, which gives some form of uh, protection uh, to state-sponsored hacking of Western companies, uh, Western governments as well. And you probably know better than anyone from your time at the Home Office when your security uh, officers would come to you and say, we believe that this latest assault has come from a state-sponsored source as well. The problem is you need sponsor, uh, a partnership with some of these regimes, and yet they are the ones who are creating the problem. Well, the problem, there's a problem even before that, because you can make an assertion. If a rocket comes at you, an intercontinental ballistic missile, you can trace where it's coming from. If a cyber attack comes at you, you can't. Traceability, verifiability, attribution are a million times more difficult with the web. You can vaguely trace it to servers, but you've got botnets and, and you've got intermediary servers. So you can make the assertion, but actually tracing it back to the root is much more difficult. However, 
However, you're right, wherever they're coming from, because this is now not a technology, it's a new environment. It's like the air, it's like space, it's transnational. Then one of the things that government should be doing is trying to get international support right across governments and right across international institutions for a series of principles, I call it a doctrine, which could then formulate the basis for a working method on this. You won't get an international law just now. There is a vested interest though, sir, with all due respect, for uh, international countries who don't have the science to get the science. We've seen it from the Manhattan Project to the technology that runs Google. Absolutely. It will go on forever and ever, and that theft of intellectual property is in the interests of certain states. So getting agreement from those states who actually A, want that intellectual property uh, and B, actually want to, as Becky pointed out, uh, to quell internal dissent who perhaps calls for democracy, it's going to be very difficult to work to a common end when you're working with such partners. Well, f f first of all, you're absolutely right. I'm not denying what you're saying, but it's hugely to the advantage of your competitors, whether governmental or commercial, uh, to have the information both of what you're doing and also transaction uh, information as regards mergers and acquisitions and so on. Secondly, however, remember this. Even governments can no longer control this because the internet is inherently subversive. The existing and inherited laws political authorities and culture are being undermined by a completely new phenomena which is the cyberspace and the cyber environment and that is precisely why we need to get governments to lead in partnership with industry and in getting some common set of principles about how to approach that that will be difficult yeah. but it's easier than trying to get an international treaty or an international law with the very people that you're speaking about who may have a self-interest in avoiding that. Well, we, we have UK GDP figures out today. As um, a former government minister of long standing, we can't let you go without asking your thoughts about the state of the UK economy at the moment. Is Plan A working? Are we going to avoid uh, another recession here in the UK? Well, I, what it looks to me is though, uh, and I hate to criticise politicians for using weasel words, but Plan A, as retained by the government, is increasingly looking like a plan and B. Um, they've been warned for a year and a half now that, that although we've got to cut the deficit, perhaps they've got the balance wrong between the reduction in expenditure, the growth elements and the taxation elements. And it looks to me as though there is a, a running adjustment going on. I hope it's not uh, too late uh, and too little, but there's certainly an adjustment and I welcome that. They seem to be bringing forward capital projects to try and spur growth because only growth is the central element that will get us out of this. Well, thanks so much for sharing your time with us today. I really appreciate you coming to, to join us here on Pleasure. the show, Lord John Reid, former Home Secretary and Defence Secretary and currently Principal with the Chertoff Group.